happened and even though it's super sad right now and it's super upsetting it's like I'm gonna look back and I just have to trust that you know God universe angels <laughs> whatever has my back and is supporting me and this actually you know happened for me and in the end it is going to be um better than I could have imagined and Feels super drowsy. Super drowsy? Well, you look really good. Really? For some that just had surgery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, right. I missed you during surgery. I miss you too. My chest feels so much lighter. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like imagine having things sitting there for seven years. Like I, I feel almost like... A weight has lifted off your chest, if you yeah. will. I feel like I can like breathe better. <laughs>
easy bruising and slow healing of wounds. That's something I've noticed with my latest acne flare up. So acne is also another symptom of uh, BII and I am noticing like when I have had acne previously and then I do certain stuff to get my skin to heal, um, my skin just isn't healing. Like I swear I have acne spots for about a year now and it's just like not really healing, if that makes sense. Um, I've also had really bad digestive issues and gut issues. Like this is going to be TMI, but when am I not TMI? And I've, I've had loose stools for like the whole entire year and just like nothing goes down well and nothing's sitting well in my stomach. I, this year, like I've been to the naturopath, I've been to an endocrinologist, I've been to my doctor and obviously, you know, I have found out I have Hoshimoto's. Another thing with the autoimmune condition is there's a lot of women who have stories of developing an autoimmune condition like Hoshimoto's and then removing their implants and that condition going away. That's probably my biggest um, symptom in, in this is like the fatigue and the Hoshimoto's. So for example, my I retested my antibodies uh, like the other day before. So I'm, I'm going to see what they're like after the implants because my biggest concern right now, the endocrinologist says, um, you know, my antibodies are so high they will not stop until my thyroid is killed off, which then means I have to go on medication for the rest of my life, which I just, yeah. Anyway, there has been so many things that doctors can't figure out. I go on medication and it's not working and all these different things. And I have just come to the point where I'm like, I think my implants are making me really unwell. And like I said, if it if they honestly make me feel, if getting my implants out make me feel even 10 or 20% better, it is so worth it for me. Like I said on my other vlog, I got my boobs done when I was like 19. I was very young. I did it for like, you know, very aesthetic, typical reasons. I had an older boyfriend. Um, I've now had my implants for seven years, so I'm getting to the point where you sh should get them like redone or taken out anyway, which is 10 years. And it's like, when we really think about it, guys, like, for example, you know when you get a splinter um, and it's like, it goes all pussy and gross, and then in a couple of days, your skin will push the splinter out. So it's like, you know, I've got these like bags in my body and it honestly feels like my body is constantly trying to fight them and it's having this auto, um, it's having this immune reaction where it's like, it's trying to fight off these foreign objects in my body. And then I'm getting a whole host of symptoms. It is Monday, my operation is on Wednesday. I will take you through the whole thing. Um, it has come around like super quick, like I said in my previous video of, I actually had this booked a couple weeks ago. I went and saw a surgeon that I had recommended and he had, um, he didn't have any spots till March next year. And I was like, I need to get these out. Like I just, there's, this gut feeling that says I need to get like these implants out. And um, he was like, I actually just had a cancellation, but it is in two weeks. Like, would you want to do it? And I was like, yes, divine timing, blah, blah, blah. Literally, I think like the day after I booked and paid for my surgery, I found out I was pregnant, which I obviously went through in my other vlog. I just need to... All good and then unfortunately and really sadly i had a miscarriage which i've spoken to you guys about obviously it was not meant to be super we are super upset and super sad so when i found out i was pregnant i cancelled the surgery because you cannot have surgery pregnant for obvious reasons i later found out that i had a miscarriage and then i called up the surgeon and they still had my spot which was really lucky um and booked in and that was like literally a couple of days ago and so it's all happening very fast. There's a lot happening. There's <laughs> Just ordered some Uber Eats, pretty much me every single week. And of course it is Mexican. So I'm just gonna eat that, um, do some emails. Then honestly, I'm probably gonna have a shower, take my makeup off 
and like watch i'm really into the tv show remember that tv show bones like the old school one where she like investigates murders love it i love it and i like bought a couple of the seasons to watch when i'm recovering i just got the sweetest delivery look at these beautiful nature flowers mel came and dropped these um this morning and i just got those and they're from my beautiful girlfriends. One minute, I like, I think I'm all fine. And, and then the next, I'm like crying. And I know, obviously, it's not gonna be a quick thing, but I'm just like, I've never felt this upset. <laughs> I'm like, one minute, I'm like, I'm fine. It, like, I try to be really positive, but I'm like, you know, everything happens for a reason. And obviously it was not meant to be. And you know, my affirmation is like, life is happening for me, not to me. But yeah, I don't, I'm also like, I just wanna say like, I'm sending so much love to anyone who else is going through something like this. I think we don't really talk about it. And it's like, I've even felt not a sense of shame, but just like a sense of like, I don't know, it's just like so taboo and sensitive and I'm like, should I even be talking to this? Should I even be talking about this on YouTube? But, you know, like, I'm strong. You guys are strong. We can do hard things and we're allowed to feel our emotions. Like, we're allowed to be upset. And I knew I couldn't film my ex-plant journey with you guys without you knowing the full thing because I literally would be crying a lot of it and you'd be like why is she crying so much about her expert <laughs> oh dinner I'm cooking some chicken Tim has just made the salad <laughs> Tim <laughs> don't <laughs> playing with the dogs <laughs> guys and happy Tuesday it is the day before my surgery I am just gonna get on top of my emails and admin obviously I'm gonna be out of action from Wednesday onwards the doctor said I will need like a recovery time of like at least a week like no work literally just laying on the couch um, but then like after that it's I can't do any walking until two weeks and then I can do light exercise, like lower body stuff around four weeks. And then at six weeks, I can do anything. So that's around the new year. It's probably come at a pretty good time because like it's gonna be Christmas holidays. Um, I did just wanna speak about something. I was just walking with my girlfriend. It was very therapeutic to like chat to someone um, I haven't really spoken to anyone since, you know, Friday when the miscarriage happened and it was really good just to chat to a girlfriend. I was saying to my girlfriend this morning, like, I honestly haven't felt like Georgie in a very long time, like at least a year I have not felt myself and I've just been so unwell and all over the place and super anxious and, you know, just mental health wise, I have not been good. I guess I'm just trying to say if you're also going through something like similar, like, for me, what's getting me through right now is just trusting that, um, you know, I'm gonna look back and go, oh, this had to happen this way because now it's, and I say this all the time, but it's like, I'm gonna look back and go, it worked out better than I could have imagined. And even though it's super sad right now and it's super upsetting, it's like, I'm gonna look back and I just have to trust that, you know, God, universe, angels, <laughs> whatever, has my back and is supporting me. And this actually, you know, happened for me. And in the end, it is going to be um, better than I could have imagined. Oh, it does look bloody good, but so we've got a salad. 
bacon and halloumi. <laughs> On sourdough. On sourdough. Tim's got his. He's got some tomato in there. Do you think this is healthy? <laughs> This is the healthiest meal of the week. <laughs> Tim's cooking contribution this week. Guys, I know this is like, you're probably going to be like, Georgia, you're so extreme. But an example of the brain fog symptom for me is just, it's something I've never experienced. I am someone... Like I am someone who completed a law degree while working full time, while having a social media on the side. And like, I'm just someone who my brain ticks in a way where I can do like two or three things at once. And I'm always thinking of how to do things more efficient. So for example, me and Tim always have this fight because not always, but like, He'll do something, it's like so small and you can tell I'm like what sort of human I am. But I'll like be like, babe, you could have done that in such a quicker way. Like he'll cook food, but it will take twice as long. And my brain is so, like it's just how my brain works. I'm like, I do things the most time efficient. I'm just like onto things. Um, and like this morning to send, this is so small, but like I made my coffee and I hadn't even put the kettle on to boil the water. Which I'm like, I just don't do shit like that. Like Georgia is so like efficient and she's so like, I don't know. And I'm like, oh yeah, like I, I didn't even put the kettle on. Like this is what it feels like all the time for like the last six months is like, and, it, and I get so like, not upset with myself, but annoyed because I know other people like that might be your normal. Like Tim is kind of like that. But like me, I'm like, this is not me. I know something is wrong and I feel crazy half the time. Like I'm, I guarantee I'm going to watch this back and be like, you crazy bitch. Um, but that's just like an example of stuff that I'm like, something is wrong. My brain is not working right. Like, ah. <laughs> uh. Surgery day. It's surgery day, guys. <laughs> it was like the weirdest intro. Um, so it is Wednesday. It is surgery day. Um, I just got up. I actually went on Instagram stories for the very first time since my miscarriage. Um, and just thanked everyone for this kind support and stuff. Just making myself a coffee. Okay, so this has got to be the weirdest breakfast ever. So this is the last meal I can have before my operation. And because we didn't really have the healthiest um, dinner last night, I felt like I needed to get some veggies in. So I've got a random plate of greens. I also made some protein oats just to get some carbs and protein. And it is around breakfast time. And then I've just got some blueberries. And as you saw previously, I had some mango. And introducing, I'm trying to think when this video will go live, if I can tell you guys, but I'll tell you. Introducing Thrive Plant Protein Christmas Cinnamon Cookies. So I am so excited. We, I say that every time. I'm so excited. We are bringing out a limited edition Christmas bundle for Naked Harvest. I'll put a photo here. It is Christmas cookie protein, which, oh my God, guys, it smells so amazing, like cinnamon cookies. Oh, and then um, the pre-workout is candy cane. I don't have one here to show you yet because it is not filled, but oh my God, I'm someone who doesn't really like mint, but it is oddly delicious. So obviously think candy cane, pre-workout. Mel has already like said, this is her favorite pre-workout flavor ever. Um, and so this would be probably available by the time you're watching this, it is available in the Black Friday sales. Um, and then it's only available during Christmas time and then it's done. You will not be able to buy it again. So I highly recommend you get your hands on it. We are doing like, you buy it in a bundle and you do save money. So, so excited for that to go live. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna have this breakfast. Tim's taking the puppies to um, a haircut and then we will head off. 
This is <laughs> Beck sit. This is the before video of what the puppies look like before their haircut. I miss you too. I love you very much. I love you. Poor little chicken, hey? Mm. Alright. And here's our little patient. <laughs> Morning after. How are you feeling, babe? I'm feeling actually um, so fine. All good? Yeah. I took an endone last night for the pain and mm -hmm. knocked me out. I went to the toilet twice, but like it's not like I woke up with pain. Or anything like that and this morning I actually feel like 
Not feeling much good. Pain. pain level is probably around three. <coughs> That's pretty good. So feeling good. And like That's good. And no bleeding underneath mm -hmm. the no. Just in my, square titties. My <laughs> <laughs> They did say that, didn't they? What? What did they say? They say they will look square for like the first. Yeah, they said they'll look square. But I even feel like my chest feels so much lighter. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like imagine having things sitting there for seven years. Like I, I feel almost like A weight is lifted off your chest, if yeah. you will. I feel like I can like breathe better. Oh, that's good. Mm. But yeah, no. All I right. feel all good for day well, one. I'm glad you're feeling well. We're going to take that armband off. Ooh. I like it. it no. Makes you feel like a I'm taking it off. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, guys, so this is what I currently look like with my bandages. Tim said I look like a sexy referee. <laughs> uh, bandages, I have no bleeding. Um, no bleeding, and I just have to wear. Um, these socks. Hello guys, so it's around lunchtime. Cooper came over and got me a coffee and some treats and so did my parents. But I just wanted to jump on here because it is crazy. It is insane how good I feel today. Like I literally had surgery yesterday. You would have seen how like whacked out I was <laughs> on the painkillers. But yeah, I haven't taken any painkillers today. It is like 1 p.m first day post-op and I actually just like I feel really good oh I feel like I can almost cry but it's like honestly like I just feel like I just know in my heart this was a right step because I just feel so much for myself it's the first time that I felt like really happy in a long time and not like there's just this like fog sitting over my head it's just it's actually a bit insane. I'm getting upset because I just dealt with this for so long and thought that's just how I had to like live life for the rest of my life. It's so dramatic, Georgia. But yeah, as you guys know, like 2020 for my health has been a really hard year. And so I just, obviously it is such early days and I will be so honest through the whole thing, but I literally could feel my body like thanking me for getting my implants out. It just, it feels a bit surreal. I, I've just ordered some lunch, ordered some Mexican. Tim has gone golfing. <laughs> he's He's been obviously so caring, um, but he's gone golfing. He's like, oh babe, like, is it okay? Do you want me to stay with you? But like, to be completely honest, when Tim's here, you guys know he's a clean freak. And so he'd be like fluffing around the house and I just want to watch TV and chill out. So I was like, no, go to golf. It's all good. I'm just going to have the afternoon here. But also I totally had a sneak peek. Very interesting. Very interesting. I don't hate it. I don't hate it, but he's like the first couple of weeks, like don't even, he's like, don't worry. My surgeon said this, don't worry about, um, oh guys. Also my surgeon's name is Dr. Richardson, Philip Rich. Dr. Philip Richardson. He's like, honestly, just don't even care what they look like for the first couple of weeks. He's like, around a good like month or two, they will go back to normal. The skin will be, you know, going back to normal and whatnot. So I'm totally happy to give you guys an update on that too. I think I will film like a vlog in a couple of months and like even show you guys. Obviously I have to think of how to do it in a way that I'm not just showing the world my nipples. Whoopee. <gasps> Oh my gosh, you look like a bat. You literally look like a little bat. Do you want to say hello to YouTube or are you a bit sad? Oh, sad boy. Hmm. Where's your brother? Bear. <gasps> who's that bear? Bear, who's that? He's way too smart. <laughs> Morning, guys. It's Friday. Uh, I don't know, I just like... <laughs> I don't know if I'm like having a come down from all the painkillers. <laughs> I had a pretty bad sleep last night. I think like the endone is giving me like, it's kind of like, feels like I'm asleep, but not fully. It's like I can still like kind of think my thoughts, but I'm all drowsy. I just don't like the way it's making me feel. So I'm probably not going to take that again tonight. I might just take the Panadol forward, but I woke up this morning and 
I'm in a bit of pain, but it's like, it's not too bad. It's maybe like a level three, but I just like feel so sad today and I don't know what it's from. It just feels like there's a black cloud sitting over me and I just, I don't know. I don't know if it's just like delayed grief or the surgery. Sunday. I wanted to do just a bit of an outro for this video. I'm not going to vlog too much just because I haven't been doing too much the last couple of days. Just been like relaxing. Me and Tim have gone to the beach, gotten like juices and acai bowls and just, you know, embracing the heel. Um, as you would have seen, Friday was like a really hard day for me. I was just honestly... Of, I was obviously very emotional and I did want to like keep that in even though I know I would be like a little bit embarrassed because <laughs> I hate showing emotion um but I, I think some days are just going to be like that with what happened and I did want to keep that in because I think it's important to you know embrace emotion and kind of get through it not push it down i think that's going to be a huge thing with my you know recovery and getting better and just like grieving also i think i was having a bit of like a come down from the drugs that i was on like just the anesthetic and like i said also i was given fentanyl which is like pretty hectic for the night of the surgery and then the night after and i was kind of having these like I wouldn't say night terrors, but just like having really, it's like kind of like I was asleep, but I wasn't asleep. And I was having these like dreams that they weren't necessarily like good dreams. And it, I just didn't like it. So I've actually stopped taking any painkillers, except I'm just taking some Panadol um, before I go to sleep. Other than that, I literally have no pain. So I had my surgery on Wednesday afternoon and yeah I like I don't know I actually feel so fine um I'm even kind of looking at myself right now on the camera and like I just I just feel good <laughs> it's just I don't know it's insane and I just like I know in my heart the surgery was like the right thing to do but yeah I want to kind of outro this video I know it's probably going to be very long thank you if you've watched this far and also just like you know, saying on the implant thing, because I guarantee a lot of girls are going to watch this if they are thinking of getting their implants out. And, you know, like I still have like little feelings that come up that it's like, you know, was this the right thing to do? I've now got very itty bitty titties. Um, and like, I really enjoyed my boobs before, but I don't know. It's like this feeling you just really need to like look within and like intuitively for me I was just I just knew I just knew something was wrong um you know like I said I had been to so many doctors I had felt like this for you know a couple of years now and like it it wasn't even to the point where it was like chronic chronic sickness but it just was to the point where I knew I could feel better and what's the point of living life in this state of not feeling 100% all the time? Like I just, that was more it to me. It's just almost like this feeling like I knew there was like more to life and to feeling a bit better. And so, um, yeah, I just had this in intuitive feeling and it all kind of fell into place. But yeah, please let me know if you have any questions about anything in the comments. Again, I just want to say a big thank you for the love and support um, on just, you know, what I'm going through right now, even though it's like really hard and vulnerable to share, it has actually been super therapeutic and healing for me because, you know, I've heard so many stories and we know the statistic, like one in four pregnancies end in miscarriage. So I know I'm not alone and it has made me feel like less alone knowing that 
it's not like, you know, my fault or, you know, something that I've done and it's just like this happens. And also it has been very therapeutic to talk about it and to talk about it with other women. And I don't think there should be this stigma where we can't talk about it or it's like, you know, a taboo thing. But yeah, thank you so much and I'll chat to you soon. Bye. Thank you.